The wheel, the plow, the mill, paper, the printing press, planes, none of these groundbreaking inventions would have been possible without engineering. Even today, as we respond to the pandemic, engineering is infinitely useful to sequence the virus, to produce millions of vaccines and to manage supply, supply chains, engineers are essential. And in fact, when it comes to contemporary challenges, engineering creates solutions across the board. To acknowledge the power of engineering in our lives, we celebrate the World Engineering Day for Sustainable Development every year on the 4th of March. This year, the second edition of the World Day is particularly special as UNESCO is launching its second engineering report 10 years after the first. Highlighting contemporary issues, it was developed with the support of the World Federation of Engineering Organizations and the Chinese Academy of Engineering, whom I thank. The report analyzes disruptive technologies and presents a comparative analysis country by country. It confirms that without engineering, the international community would be unable to achieve the sustainable development goals. It shows that engineers are in demand everywhere around the world. In high income countries, for example, the number of computer technology and engineering jobs is predicted to grow by 12.5% per year uh, until 2024, according to data from the US Bureau of Labor Statistics. However, this report also highlights challenges that need to be addressed. Two of these stand out. Firstly, Africa needs engineers for its development, but has an insufficient number of them. As the report explains, Africa is home to the fewest numbers of engineers per capita in the world. In some countries, there is only one qualified engineer for every 170,000 people, compared to one qualified engineer for every 1,000 people in richer countries. The second inequality is the chronic and alarming underrepresentation of women in engineering. According to UNESCO data, women account for less than 30% of all engineers with wide variations between countries. There is a gender barrier which prevents women and girls from taking up their chosen career. It holds all of us back by depriving us of the ingenuity of half of humanity. Did you know, for example, that we owe some of the most brilliant inventions to women? The first software algorithm to Ada Lovelace, wireless transmission techniques to Eddie Lamar, solar heating to Maria Telkes, distress flares to Martha Coston, complex calculations for space travel to Mary Jackson, et cetera, et cetera. As we can see, these two inequalities of geography and gender are not only an injustice, they are a major source of inefficiency and obstacles to sustainable development. That's why our report sets out tangible courses of action for decision makers to improve scientific cooperation and train the engineers of tomorrow and especially women. To this end, we must remember that scientific education cannot be improvised. It is a long and continuous process which involves social representations and which must begin, which must begin early in primary or nursery schools. UNESCO, whose S stands for science, is therefore committed to promoting education in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, especially in Africa, and especially for girls and women. Today, more than ever, science and engineering should be free of gender barriers and geographical borders. To quote the Canadian engineer Michel Thibaudot de Geer, in her words, to find solutions to the complex problems of our world, we need all the brains we can master. Only in this way can engineering realize its full potential. I thank you. <laughs>